Nicolette Coster Waldau. Fingers crossed for a good connection. I'm talking here with, of course, Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones. Thanks for sitting down with me. Um, this show is is sort of like no other right now, and we're nearing the tail end of it, uh, of this epic journey, um, with just one season left. And the characters, at least the ones who survived this long anyway, have all had this crazy transformation over these seven seasons so far, especially Jamie. Uh, I'm curious to know what what for you has changed the most about him since the beginning? Well, there's been a, a, a couple of things on the way. I, I think that um, the loss of his hand uh, mm -hmm. was a big defining moment. Um, and I think overall it's the whole, the undercurrent for him has always been, it goes back to the, you know, the first thing he says in episode one, the things I do for love, which is about how his whole life has been about his sister and it's been, 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 he's lived his life on his sister's terms, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, and I think, uh, the end of, of last season was kind of a, a, a very, very big moment because I think he, for the first time, he knowingly uh, acted against Cersei's wish, wishes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also, uh, I think for a moment, saw her, I guess in a way, like the rest of the world has seen her for some time. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Did, did you ever think, you know, back all those years that you, you'd end up riding north to help to help the Northmen with that fight? Was that ever something that could have crossed your mind? Well, I, you know, to be honest, I, I thought that, which is also, so you always look for little clues. And then I think right. one of the great things about this show is that, that there are a lot of, also in season eight, moments where you go, oh, yeah, I remember that in... Season two, episode three, that happened. Now we got a little. I think that the tiniest of moments with uh, Jon Snow in, in episode one. Uh, just meet him. He's, he's a good luck at uh, the wall, you know. It's, uh, we need great men like you. I always, me and, me and Kit Harrington spoke about it. Well, you know, surely at one point we're going to meet again. There must be some payoff. Right. Um, and now at least he's going north, so he's trying to get up there. We'll see if he makes it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You don't. Um, you know, one of the things that I have been fascinated about with Jamie um, in terms of character changes is he sort of occupies this gray area oftentimes between sort of hero and villain. Um, he's done some pretty awful things, but then he's done some redempt redemptive things. Uh, is that fun for you to play? Do you label him as as one or the other? No, no, I don't. I don't see it like that. I, I, you know, he, and I don't think there are. I think one of the great things about the show is you don't really have heroes or villains. Or when you think you have them, it kind of turns. And I think one of the the greatest, by you know, I think one of the scenes that really captured that was last uh, last season when the whole loot train sequence where we have. Uh, Daenerys, who's like the, the 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 hero of the show so far, and then suddenly she does this where she is, you know, you understand why she attacks. There's no question she is in her in it's her right, but the brutality and the horror that she inflicts is 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 is, is it, it's kind of shocking. And it's also what's shocking, I guess, is that the way they film it, they they they, you know, they show it from. The Lannister's perspective, so you actually see the horror. Um, most other movies or films, you would you wouldn't have seen it from their perspective. You you would have been stayed up in the drag and you were going, "Fuck them all! Yeah, this is great, <laughs> destroy them." Um, but I think that, that that kind of is is what the show is doing all the time. It's it's saying, well, it's it's really it's so much to do about perspective. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I always the fact is we all. None of us are just good or bad, or uh, and the same with these characters. And it's it's really about what do you focus on? How do you? I mean, who who's the who's the, the if you will the main attraction in this scene? And uh, and you can always, as with any conflict, any war, you can always, you know, argue. Most most of the time, you can argue both ways. I think. Yeah, that battle was. I, I mean, I think and one of the most iconic moments of 
course, but, uh, but there's uh, people who are in a war will always argue that, listen, we're fighting a just war. Yeah. How, how long does it take you to prepare for a scene like the loot train with so many um, uh, stunt doubles and, and Well, I mean, I think it, we shot for a long time. We shot that in Spain in a place called Cathras. Um, it took, it, it, was, it was complicated because there was a lot of things that had to join together. Um, obviously there was the, you know, some horse training, quite a lot of horse training involved. Um, but I loved it. I, I mean, you, 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 that's one of the things you go, obviously we didn't have the dragon, <laughs> but everything else was there. And which is like, so you, you, you actually, I know they set a record for most guys on fire in, in yeah. one shot. It was 20 or 21. So when you stand there, you see that it's, it's absolutely horrifying. I mean, it's, it's, it's even though you obviously, you know, I mean, you know, they have, I think they count to 30 or something and then they, 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 you know, they, they jump in with the fire extinguishers, but you, up to that point, you see human beings, fire. <laughs> from your life. it's, it's just horrible. Which is was was great, you know, for us and for, for me, for, for for you know, when you shoot the scenes where you want to see, you want to see Jamie's, you know, uh, reaction to this. You want you want and, and also the scene after when he comes back to Cersei. You want to. It made it so much easier for me you know, to carry that the knowledge of, of this horror. Um, but to answer your question, there was a lot of of, of prep and and uh, and then you just. Uh, you know, I we have the best stunt guys and riders, and you trust them, and and you know, mm -hmm. I never feel in danger. <laughs> That's good. And despite being a warrior, um, and you know, you have a lot of great battle scenes over the course of the series, but I often associate you with these great two-hander scenes. Um, yeah. One thing that Game of Thrones does really well is its dialogue. That's what keeps people, or me anyway, coming back, um, is because there's so much emotion there. Whether it's with you and Gwendolyn Christie, or you and Jerome Flynn, or Lena Headey. Um, do you, I agree. Yeah. Do you have a preference in acting over one of those areas? Like, do you prefer the action scenes or the more dramatic work? I don't like action without context. is is not interesting, and I think that's one of the things again with the show is that you care like with that scene, the loot train. The thing you're so invested in all these characters, so you. You don't want them to die. You don't want this bad thing to happen. Then, then it, it's it's telling a story about these characters in an extreme situation, which is a, a battle. Um, obviously, I mean not obviously, but I, I I do, you know, I had some f amazing scenes. I was very lucky in 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 this this season. I, I you know, had a scene with Diana Rick, her last scene on the show, which is a, it's such a great two hander. Where all, also, as you said, you've heard about. You know Jamie Lannister being this great soldier, but you, but basically in <laughs> most of the, the the show he's been he's been failing, or you've seen him after he was captured, or he goes right. off to see his daughter and he comes brings back at her corpse. It's it, it and finally here you see him. You saw it last season as well with, with River. Actually, see him doing what he does best and succeeding, outmaneuvering his brother and Daenerys, and then you know basically going to this woman who's 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 like. The female version of his father, mm. in an extreme, and he has all the power. So I didn't have to 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 play any of that. Um, and it was just a beautiful scene. But because you know, as as you know, the ending is, is like, you know, he thinks he's he's been, he's done all the right things, and he's he's also given her, a, you know, an honorable, uh, you know, death in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been gracious, giving her a pill so she wouldn't suffer. And then she goes, by the way. And stabs him in the heart with the truth of, of Joffrey, which I, you know, it was just, uh, it was, it was. First of all, she's so amazing as an actress, and uh, it was beautifully written, and it was fun. So, to answer your question, I, I, you know, as an actor, the most, it's different kinds of fun, but but creatively doing those scenes, the two handers, the three handers, the, I, I, I love them. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's the, yeah, what? Th 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 those are. All Proteins, um, what is different about? Because I know I don't think you've had like just a two-hander with Diana Rigg before on the no. series. What's your reaction when you read the script and realize that you well, get I was you're the one to send well, her off? Was, the story surprised me, and I love the the fact that it surprised me, and I love the fact that he, because you know, at the end of of, of season six, you kind of go, you see that that the, the biggest army ever is arriving, and you go, the Lannisters. 
there's no way they can how they can't win mm -hmm. this and then you actually see that you know they can they 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 have a shot up until that point when the dragon then goes crazy um but but the when I read it, I was like, it was just a great scene. And I mean, it's 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 a power play. It's um, it's uh, it it was just a lot of layers. And, and then there was also a scene where a woman uh, knows knows he, she knows this world, and she she tells him something with, that he definitely does not want to hear. She says that Cersei is gonna be the death of you. You know, she will. You know, if you if you don't wisen up, you're gonna she's gonna kill you, which of course sets up beautifully the last scene of the show between Cersei and Jamie, where you for at least I think Jamie thinks, and then I think the audience for a second you go, is she gonna take him out? Is she is she gonna kill him now? Um, so that was it. You know, at the end of the day, it's about we've been very very I've been very very lucky with the with the writing and for Jamie, and it, it's just. Uh, it's complicated with these scenes because there are so many layers and then of course so many things <clears throat> happens between the scenes because we because we have so many characters we don't have time to follow you know follow them all the time so you have to make all these connections and all these adjustments between the scenes but it's uh, it's fun well speaking of you and and Cersei uh, you and Lena work so well together and had so many great moments this season and there's a lot of times where she makes moves to make your relationship public. She lets the servant see you guys in bed and she wants to let everyone know the baby is yours. Um, is that where you think the breaking point comes at for Jamie? What, what's the ultimate thing well, that drives that, you? I think that what's heartbreaking in the end is that she's playing him. Yeah. I think part of her wants, you know, there is a little part of her that wants to to embrace the the romance and of course she also wants the you know they lost three children now she's pregnant again i mean could could we regain what was lost that that's a beautiful dream at the same time though she is she's she's just you know she used him in this whole end game mm -hmm. completely she manipulated him into believing that you know you know love is stronger than anything and that that he was her closest confidant that all those things which made him easy to manipulate. And that, you know, I think more than anything, in the end, that really broke his heart. Um, that one, she's that's cynical about everything, right? She's just cynical because right. it's about power in her world. There's so many um, layers, you know, specifically the scenes we're talking about. And I asked how, how long it took to, to prepare for um, the loot train and a scene like that. How long do you get any rehearsal time? What is your rehearsal process like for an actual dialogue scene? We, we have rehearsal. Uh, um, we um, it, it it varies, but we'll usually have rehearsal quite a long time before we actually shoot, which is great because then you and it, it's different with different actors. Me and Lino because we we've, we've worked so long together and we know the characters so well. So usually the rehearsal will be a very 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 long intensive discussion mm -hmm. where we kind of go through all the you know ins and outs and 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 you know try to make sense of it and then we will put it up on its feet we'll do, we'll do a very simple blocking so that uh, and and you know and we won't touch it until day but the thing is, I mean, the, the the fun with those scenes, and and then and, and also now, of course, in what we're shooting now is that you've built up so much information over all these years. I mean, I've, I've you know, I don't. Most of us have never done. I've never done anything that lasts. I mean, we started more or less to this day nine years ago with the pilot, and it like you, you've had so much time with these characters. You've spent so much time thinking. You know about where why you know going back to you know you know you know you feel like you know you know them so well you know you've you've thought about all kinds of way how did it you know affect them that they grew up without the mother how did it affect i mean all those things that that you take with you um and of course then that when you do the scene you are i mean at least i am then just before you do it, you're desperate just you want to forget everything because you don't want to you know what I mean? You don't want to come in with all this and, and want to tell 
28 stories in one go because you can't hopefully is there you know having spent so much time with the character um and then now we're sort of off book um with the the show getting ahead of george r, r. martin's novels what was kind of the most surprising turn for jamie something that didn't you didn't expect based on everything that had happened before um well i think it you know it's that weird thing where you you're caught between what you hope for the character mm -hmm. in a way like what i want him to do and then then what he does and uh I think that I'm more of a romantic than Dan and David. <laughs> they don't let a lot of couples last. I wanted, I kind of wanted him to just break out, you know, just leave Cersei and she's bad for you and she's, it's not healthy. And, and clearly you're in a relationship where you are more in love with her than she loves you. So, you know, and what about this, right? Brienne of Tarth, she's like, what a great, <laughs> I mean, I'm no different than anyone else, I'm, but I hope this romantic, but then I, it totally, for me, makes complete sense the way they choose to tell the story after after the books, mm -hmm. which is such. I mean, you know, it's any, you know, anyone who knows anything about any writing adapting is like it's so difficult to adapt a novel, but then to also have to then go off it and it, it's um, it's it's quite uh, an achievement, I think. Um, but I, I uh, no, I wanted Jamie to do something else a long time ago, and I'm so grateful that they didn't. Mm -hmm. That they that because he is he's bound. I mean, he is. You know, he, he's always he's defined. He himself is defined by his relationship to Cersei. There's no question about it. And uh, the interesting thing now, of course, going into eight is that. Because now he's left her, and then is this, is this real? Is this, is it, is it? Does he mean it, or was that in a in a moment of of emotion? You know that thing where you're so angry, so you walk out, you you know you you you're never gonna come back, and then twenty minutes later you go, oh, <laughs> hey, can we talk about it? But <laughs> but um, he might be texting her like, please, I'm sorry. But who knows? No, I'm, 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 no, it wasn't a spoiler because <laughs> I just find that interesting. And I think it's so, even though we have this, and I think that's always been interesting with these, I find these characters so relatable. I mean, I can relate to these people. I mean, even though they are in this ridiculous, crazy world with dragons and direwolves and magic and, you know, all that stuff, they and ultimately, that's part of the, the the reason people love the show. You can still you can still identify with those moments they have, as you said, the two handers and the three handers. Absolutely. Well, as we come up on on time here, I wanted to, I'm afraid to ask about season eight because I think HBO will probably send assassins after me if I spoil anything, and I don't yeah, want spoilers. Will. But um, since you're in the middle of it now, uh, is there just to tease us to leave us with something? How would you describe season eight thus far in three words? Or oh, three words. Surprising. Uh, I, enormous. Um, heartbreaking. Surprising, enormous, heartbreaking. And I then the internet run wild with that. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, but I could pick three other words as well. Yeah. Though. That's thing it could also be uh you know satisfying uh shocking and heartbreaking again i think <laughs> <laughs> oh well, but i mean let me put it this way the thing is it's it's like it's a it's a different animal now in a way because mm -hmm. we're shooting it's six episodes right and we spend more time they tell they say that already but we spend more time shooting this this these six episodes that we did shooting two whole seasons before Right, and each one's like a feature. I'm sorry, there's a lady coming in here. <laughs> it's just before, it's okay. Sorry. Yeah, it, it is like we had one episode was 73 days. So, wow. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Well, that's incredible. Um, 
I think that's all the time I'll, I'll we have for you. I'll let you get back. Um, Sorry about all this. Sorry about the internet yeah. connection. But, but, no, but I think we made it through. We made it through, and we'll uh, we'll ponder those those words you left us with and get ready for season eight. So thanks. You know, by the way, I've been holding up because I'm using.